There's the guts of a model NC57. It's a national tube, a national brand tube radio. Uh, something I want to restore over the summer. Uh, like the uh, other uh, NC150, NC125 that I want to do. A, that's another video. I'm doing those. These are both things I want to get working again over the summer. Not I'm with a um, bunch of uh, Cornell Doublé. Uh, Stupid wax invested paper caps, which are absolutely horrible things. They're basically the um, like a, a paper foil type capacitor, but then put it in a uh, vacuum and then immediately dump it in wax. And the idea is that the wax um, <coughs> um, impregnates everything and makes it waterproof, except they're not. They're a fairly hygroscopic relative to various. Um, electronic components and they can drift fairly badly with uh, time so that's these are going to obviously going to be changed out as are the um, a lot of these um, carbon composition resistors because those are um, only really reliable if they're um, only running a tiny fraction of their um, rated uh, Things like rated maximum potential across the device, rated power dissipation, rated operating temperature range. Um, they can be fairly, fairly reliable, it, or they're supposed to be fairly reliable um, if you adhere to all kinds of various operating constraints, which is why they're still used in some stuff. But um, personally, I don't really like them because oftentimes the stuff that I do isn't don't don't I don't, doesn't really have the option of being so careful. Uh, so yeah, they're kind they're kind of like the, the the tantalum capacitors of the um, resistor world. Whereas those are some um, sand ceramic um, wire wound uh, power resistors. Those are obviously a modification done by a previous owner to, after the thing was made. Uh, I think this thing probably dates. Judging by just the, the components are a bit newer looking than the um, other radio. I guess this is probably very late 1940s, early 1950s. Although still fairly old, you can see like the uh, that trim cap. They do, they denote uh, picofarads as micro microfarads. These are some of the various trimmers on the um, tuning capacitor. So various IF coils and some of these um, old, really old school old style um, mica caps. That's how they used to denote uh, picofarads before sometime in the 1960s. There's a 10 nanofarad um, cap. It, these are interesting in that they look to have both, or these particular micas look to be interesting in that they have both a printed rating, which is how more modern caps do it, or are marked, and um, the uh, painted dots. Of course the problem with the dots is that their colors are generally not very time stable. That's a uh, 10 nanofarad, 600 volt DC, and another wax cap. Um, these uh, more modern looking capacitors, this is a uh, Mallory Plast cap with uh, uh, 6122, which is, a th that could be very easily a date code, which would be 322 and 1961, which is obviously after the thing was made. Uh, 0.22 microfarads, that's what, 22 nanofarad, or two, this either 22 nanofarad or 220 nanofarad, I can't read the whole part number. But there's another 10 nanofarad, 600 volt cap, um, and there's a uh, carbon composition resistor, obviously not original, as is right over there, so I think those are probably, I guess probably sometime in the 1970s, early 1980s, again, I don't really know the history of this radio beyond about probably 20, 20 odd years ago, which is when my uh, dad got it, probably at a ham fest or something. There's a couple of uh, temperature compensating uh, dog bone, I think they're temperature compensating, those are dog bone ceramic capacitors, which you can still get from places like um, uh, Circle Sales in Nebraska, which might be where I get, might probably get replacements, because I don't know if Digikey even carries stuff like that anymore. Um, of course, the thing is that they want a lot of money, but the stuff they have tends to be fairly decent. Well, in some cases, like they'll add, like a lot of their um, 
54 series mil spec TTL they'll have for comparable to to even cheaper than what places like Digikey and uh, well not so much Digikey but Jameco want for regular consumer grade or regular industrial grade TTL uh, 74 series so yeah <coughs> there's a couple of uh, connectors on the back which are, I think for interfacing with an external receiver of course the thing is, is that some of those have blocking plugs which is just a plug which wires together some of the pins this didn't have any of those and each an electrolytic going to be replaced. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah. So, not going with this will be not be the last time this uh, thing gets featured in a video because not going to want to get this thing working again because uh, especially because one of the poten the potential regulator tube in this, <coughs> um, which functions in effect like a hollow state um, Zener slash avalanche diode type tube uh, it's an argon atmosphere one and that glows purple which is really interesting just because you got you know the orange glow from all the various other tubes and you've got the purple just a lot more interesting than um, modern solid state stuff although that you can compensate by having all kinds of weird colors for your idiot lights but then again not many things do that. It's usually just either blue, which of course they use a bunch of super bright LEDs so it blinds the user, or white, or it's all rather boring actually. The other um, one of these that I have, um, which is featuring in another video, that I don't think the potential regular Mac loves at all because when I tried testing them years ago. So yeah. <coughs> it's the thing. And this is the tube compartment. Uh, this this one actually has all its tubes. Um, central regulator tube right there, which is a very interesting tube when the radio is operating as it's glowing purple. Because it's a um, argon filled uh, potential regulator. It basically functions as a hollow state equivalent to something like an avalanche diode or a zener diode. Of course, one avalanche diode because of the potentials involved. But, um, and then more metal case tubes. Little tiny 686 there. That. 10. Yeah, that's a, that's a capacitor. 10 microfarads. 10 microfarads. Blah, blah, blah. Again, intermediate stage transformers. Um, obviously, not the original speaker because this thing has had some extensive modifications in or restoration over the years. Um, that's the um, impedance matching transformer for the speaker. Power, main power transformer, inductor of some sort down there. A uh, lamp uh, for the dials. Um, and tuning capacitor. Um, Spring loaded anti backlash gear down there. And uh, other than that, I have a string drive belt for the. Uh, I think that's the band spread thing, and of course the. Uh, Band spread dial doesn't want to turn, so that's one thing that's going to need to be worked on with this thing. So yeah, and that's a uh, uh, Type 44, which is I think a six volt lamp. Again, this radio, given that these are all, with the exception of the 5Y3, um, these are all six volt tubes. They just use the same potential as the uh, just use a lamp with the same potential, just running on the same winding of the transformer.